Well, welcome back to Life Journey Production Studios. My name is Keith. Thank you so much for joining me again. We are in the Hyperdeck series, and this is lesson three. We're going to look at getting it all integrated with your ATEM mixer. It could be an ATEM Mini, it could be a Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, it could be the ATM Mini Extreme, which I think the Mini needs to be dropped, or the Extreme ISO, or any of the other switchers by Blackmagic Design. You should have the SDI converted coming out of the Hyperdeck, both channels, the key and the alpha or the key and the fill, and those should be plugged into your switcher device ready to go. You should also have a USB cable plus C plugged into the back of your Hyperdeck and into your PC or your Macintosh, as well as it hooked into the network. So an ethernet cable plugged into a switch or to your hub so that you have that mixer, right? The ATEM also hooked into the same network so they can communicate over the internet or, or over the ethernet. So now what we want to do is we want to go to Blackmagic Design's website. We want to download the Hyperdeck software and we want to get everything integrated using the control software and the Hyperdeck software and the setup software. So let's switch to SuperSource here. And there you see the Blackmagic Design website. Now this is the main site. You can see it's blackmagicdesign.com but you're gonna to want to go to the support page. And so we're going to click over here to the support page. So up here you see product re, um, reseller and support. We're gonna click on support. And when you click on support, you get this new screen, right? And uh, all of these different choices. And you're gonna watch this change because we're gonna go over here to recorders and click on that. And once we click on that, you don't really see anything change. But if you look right here, as I click these, you see these different files below here changing. So we're gonna click up here again on recorders. And this looks a little different from the pictures that are on the product page, but don't let you throw you. We're just looking for the, the recorder um, deal here. And then you don't see it right away because you're gonna have to scroll down in this column. And if you scroll down right here, you're gonna see the Hyperdeck 7.1.3 update, and then you're gonna click on either Windows or Macintosh, whichever you have, and I am a Windows user, so second choice is mine. I click on that, and then I have this page right here, and this page is asking me to register, but I can just go down here to download only, click on that, and then when this is downloading, and you're gonna see it populate down here in just a second, there it goes, I'm gonna click on um, show in folder when it's done uploading and it's going to pop over the folder and then once this is done watch what happens on my pc it probably will happen this way on your pc as well as soon as that's downloaded and i have a bunch of them down here because i've been practicing there it is it pops open you're going to double click on this install item and after everything's installed um, you can close this window i already have it installed so i'm going to bypass that part um, close all these now we're gonna go down here and find where we run it. So you go on the start menu on a Macintosh, you're gonna go into your programs and you're gonna find the folder or the icon. So you click on start, scroll down under B to Blackmagic Design, which is right here. Open this folder, all of the software falls into this folder. By default, we want Blackmagic Hyperdeck setup. You can also grab this with your mouse Hold your mouse down and drag it down here. I have it here already so I can do updates anytime the firmware updates and that's what we're about to do for you. So I can click right here to the software and go to it. And like I said, if I have my USB-C plugged in, it's gonna find it right away. It's gonna give you an update warning right here. If it doesn't, click on this box right here. It should give you an update warning now. Um, so we'll talk about this in a second. You also have the help menu up here. And if you click on it, you have one choice here. It's gonna show you the version that you have. And you can see that I have already updated my firmware on my Hyperdeck. And that's what you're gonna do at this point. So go ahead and update, close that. Go ahead and update your firmware. And then I'll show you these options right here so you can stop this video, update your firmware, and then come right back. So once you open up this menu again, it's found right here below the picture of the Hyperdeck, one choice. You click on it. You don't really have to set up anything here to start. You have the same options to set these up inside the Hyperdeck menu system. But if you want to do it from the setup software, you can choose which codec that you want to record at. 
So these are recording codecs because you can record to the Hyperdeck. You can also play videos back from the Hyperdeck with audio, and you can also do motion graphics from the Hyperdeck with an alpha channel. So here's where you choose the codec that you want to record from. So if you're a ProRes user, you could choose ProRes. You also have codecs at the very bottom now, H.264, which coincides with how you um, encode inside a ATEM Mini. Um, if you have the Pro, the Pro ISO, the Extreme, the Extreme ISO, you're encoding at 264, and you have the choice to choose what level of um, H.264. So you have low, medium, and high, and you can see those same choices right here on the screen. And you could also set that you automatically start and stop the Hyperdeck from the SDI input on the back if you're recording from a Blackmagic Design camera. And so you could set that as well. So we're done. We've updated the firmware. Hopefully you have. You've double checked up here to make sure you have the most recent firmware. And um, try that again. And you have 7.1.3 as of May of 2021 when I'm recording this video. And we're done with that. So we close that, close that. And now we're going to bring over the control software and show you the settings that you need to make in here. So down on the bottom here, you have the little settings wheel. So we're going to click on that. We're going to go, you might open up to the general folder. We're going to cross over here to Hyperdeck. One thing you may want to do is go to the labels and label where you have the Hyperdeck plugged into your ATEM. I'm in seven and eight. You can see I've set channel seven as Hyperdeck um, fill and channel eight as Hyperdeck key. So when I go into my super source or I'm assigning um, my keys inside my control software, I know that those are there real quickly because I'll see Hyperdeck key fill on the menu. So we're going to go over to Hyperdeck. And right now you can see I have the green little arrow here, check mark. It says my Hyperdeck is communicating with my control software. You may not have that yet because you're going to have to put in your IP address. So let's change macros and let me show you where you find that. Close this. And let me click on this macro. Hit play. And here's the front of the Hyperdeck. So right here, you click on menu and we'll cover this in just a minute. And after you hit menu, these two arrows let you go right and left through pages. We're going to go over here two pages and right there you can see my um, IP address. So that's the IP address I'm going to plug in right up here in my um, Hyperdeck. You get my settings open again. So I'm going to plug that IP address right here and then I'm going to choose the first channel it's plugged into. So if you have it plugged into channel three, you're going to choose that. If you have your Hyperdeck plugged into channel seven like I do or any other channel, that's what you would choose right here. It tells your control software when you cut to that particular input on your ATEM, whatever controller you have, it's going to be able to auto roll if you have auto roll set. So how do we set auto roll? That's right here. I can set auto roll. I can also set how many frames I want it to delay before it starts to play the video or a graphic for that matter, because I can play graphics, motion graphics and videos from my Hyperdeck. I could even play something I recorded earlier in H.264 onto the Hyperdeck. I could play that later as a replay in the middle of the session or at a break if I wanted to. And if I wanted to auto roll when I cut back to that channel, then I need to have auto roll set. So we're going to leave it set right now so I can demo the auto roll here in a few minutes. So once you have your IP address in here and you can actually get your um, IP address set and use a static IP address, you need to dedicate that IP address through your software of your network. And then you can go into the settings inside the Hyperdeck menu system and you can set a static IP there if that's what you want to do, or you can do it in the, the control software. So we're going to save this. We have it set to the right channel. We have it set for auto roll. You have this little icon, but wait, what if you put all of that information in and it still isn't a green check? Well, it might be something inside the control panel menu system of the Hyperdeck. So let me demonstrate that. Close this again so I can run a macro here manually. So I'm back to this screen so you can see the front of the Hyperdeck. 
Let's go into the menu system and let me show you a couple settings that you need to have set in order for this to integrate. So we're gonna click out of the menu. So let's say this is the screen you see, or you don't have any videos in and you see a blank screen because you haven't put any SD cards in yet. You can still click on the menu and then you can go over to this channel right here, page four, and you need to have remote on. If you do not have remote on, this is what happens. So I'm gonna hit set to, to use that page. I'm gonna hit set again to go in here. I'm gonna go right to click off. I'm gonna hit set. Now I have my HyperDeck set to off, so it's not set to remote control. So let's pop back over here into the screen. Let's go back into the settings menu on the bottom left. And you can see now I have this ye little yellow warning and it actually says remote is not active on this HyperDeck. So it even tells you what the problem is, but if you don't know where to go change that, it's not in the control software. It's not in the setup software that we just downloaded from Blackmagic Design. It's only in the HyperDeck menu. So again, we have to change that in the HyperDeck. So this is yellow now. We have everything else right, but it's not wanting to go. It won't even set auto roll because it can't communicate to it. So we're gonna cancel that. We're gonna go back into that macro that shows you just my HyperDeck. And I'm gonna go back and turn this back to on. Hit set, it's back to on. Go back to the menu system. I'm gonna cue this video, plug in the SD card, and there's room for two SD cards. These are um, need to be over 120 megabytes a second. You can see this one, if you look close enough, it's 170 megabytes a second. You need to have at least 120 for this to integrate. Let me go that way. So this card is in and it goes green. And then once it's reading it, it stops. And now you're gonna see my video. That is a sneak peek of my session two in this HyperDeck series that I used in my live presentation this last week. So let's go back in the control software and let's take a look at the HyperDeck again. We're gonna go down here to settings. We're gonna look and there it is all ready to go. Auto roll fell off because it doesn't work if you don't have it set in the HyperDeck itself to auto start, stop. So I'm gonna click on it again. I have two frames of delay set. I'm gonna hit save and now I'm ready to go. So how do you control the HyperDeck? Do you have to push the buttons on the front? Well, you can if you want, but you can also control the HyperDeck Mini from your control software because now they're integrated. You have the firmware updated. You've chosen the codec that you wanna record in. Right now, we just want to play a video, and so we have it integrated. I have my videos gonna play in channel seven in my ATEM uh, switcher. So if I switch to channel seven right now and I have the video queued, it should just auto roll. I shouldn't have to do anything but change the channel seven. Let's change this channel seven and see what happens. So I'm gonna push channel seven on my ATEM. I'm gonna hit auto for dissolve. There you go. It just auto rolled the video by just changing to input number seven. And you can see that on the screen. You see seven is lit up right here on the screen that you're looking at. If I click this auto roll button, it's gonna start playing that video again. Let's just focus on setting it up to play. So and if I change back, it doesn't stop it from playing. I have to hit stop on the front of the HyperDeck to stop that video from playing. But if I have it queued and I switch to channel seven, it's going to auto roll. So now let's cut to the other view and let you see it happen firsthand. So now we're back to the HyperDeck. I am gonna now cut again to channel seven. Um, just by hitting the auto, I could hit the cut button too. On my ATEM, um, I would have to hit auto um, but on my software, I can just hit the cut button. So let's cut. Up. So we're gonna grab the power and the video is right there playing for you in this broadcast. Cut it back again and hit stop. And now the video is stopped. So again, I can auto roll if I want to. I cannot auto roll and start it and stop it manually if I so desire. And I can start this video from here. You can see the audio meters. And so. 
as long as you have two stereo audio set inside the um, menu system. And the way you find that is right here. You go to the first page, you have audio here, you're gonna hit set, you're gonna scroll down to two channels and you have all these choices. You wanna make sure that you have set two channels audio, you have it set to automatically start and stop. You can also go in this menu and choose your codec. So click to this page, hit set, go down one by using the right and left arrow. These will also change clips on your disc. Hit set, go up one, hit set. And I can now go down and choose any one of these codecs all the way down to H.264. And if you record H.264, you have the low, medium, and high settings there. If you record into your HyperDeck, you can play back H.264 as well. That's pretty important because if you're doing a live event and you want to do some replays and you're recording from one HyperDeck, again, out of it over to another HyperDeck and you want to just hit a replay or you want to hand someone H.264 uh, recording on a disc like a speaker, then you can set your HyperDeck to record at H.264, record to it, come out of it either through the SDI outputs into another HyperDeck, or you could just come out of the HDMI monitor output to another HyperDeck, and that could be a place that you load discs, record just a session, and hand them off, and you could charge extra for that in your package, and I think that would pay for both your HyperDecks if you were doing real quick recordings and handing speakers at H.264 of their event. So like a TED Talk event, a special event like a wedding where you wanted to hand off recordings to mom and dad of the ceremony, you could literally hand them a recording before they left if you were live producing it. And that's pretty powerful. You could also have multiple hyperdecks. So let's go back um, in the screen. And up here under um, settings, you could have one, two, three, four hyperdecks, and you would set them up the same. And then you can also sync them in the back. You have sync cables, SDI, to go to the other ones, and you can sync them so they're all in sync, um, and they do that in large recording studios. So why would you need four hyperdecks? I can think of a number of reasons. Like I said, for instant replay, you could use one for playing videos, one for recording. You could use another one for motion graphics. In fact, you, if you have four keys like I have now in my, or four upstream keys that I have now in my extreme ISO, I could be using one of those keys for motion graphics and another one and another HyperDeck with motion graphics. So again, if you wanted to set things in motion and use the HyperDeck to do graphics like that, you could dedicate two to motion graphics. You could dedicate two for recording or one for playback and the other one for just handing off disk and record to it only. Again, with one input for recording and two outputs, you have lots of different things that you could do to integrate those hyperdecks and use them for instant replay. We're gonna look at one more thing before we go. So we're gonna save this. We're gonna go up here to this menu and we're gonna go under media player and I wanna show you now how you can control it from the control software. So here's my one hyperdeck. If I had two, three, and four, they would be listed right here. I have a list of my files. It can see and read off of the HyperDeck, and we'll talk about how to render those later. They could have alpha channels or not have alpha, alpha channels, and we'll talk more about that in the next session. I can set them to loop, right? I can also go to my HyperDeck. Uh, let me switch to that here. And I could go in here, cue this video, get in the menu, exit. I could cue this video and I could hit play. If I hit it again, it goes in the loop mode. Turn that way down. If I hit it again, it goes in the loop mode. And if I hit it again, it goes in the loop all videos mode. So again, you can double click on that um, play button and it'll go in the loop mode. If you triple click on it, it goes into loop mode for all the clips. Um, for whatever you would use that for. But that's available inside the software by hitting the play button. And in the other software right here, you have the ability to run those videos. So if I hit play on one, let's go down here and turn that audio way down this time. 
and let's hit play. So there you see it playing. I can hit loop right here. And now that video is going to loop. I can hit stop. I can have loop ready for when that goes active. I can change the different clips here. I can rewind with this button, go to the next clip, go to the next clip. If I had one clip, it would go to the first of the clip. I can also hit record right here as well. And it also tells you how much time is remaining. So you can see right up here, I have it playing. I also have a clock right here counting down. And that's really important. Up here, it tells me the duration. And on the front of this device, you can see right here it, what, what version I am, 1080p and 29 frames per second. It tells me that I'm in loop mode. I can turn loop mode off by hitting it twice. It's still playing. I have the, the meters right here telling me the timing. I have audio meters right here, and I have the clip playing. And that is a clip that I did with Adam Tao. And um, this is my little sneak peek video. And that should get you running with your um, playing videos and recording in your HyperDeck. We're going to look in the next video on how to integrate it with motion graphics with your keys and have those come right in on your live broadcasts or your recordings in your um, ATEM. So I am Keith. We'll talk about that in the next video. Thank you for tuning in to the HyperDeck series and I'll see you very soon.